Hey folks, Rick again, Twinbrook Acres. So uh, first of all, thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in. Um, so this is the 12th and final episode of the Barn Restoration Series. Uh, I may have some other videos in the future on some of the little oddball things that I still have to do around here. I've got a long list of things I still have to do, but those are going to be just um, <laughs> when I feel like doing them. Um, not on any certain time frame. So the barn is essentially done. The last big uh, project was the installation of the doors. And that I had to do piecemeal because I couldn't get all the hardware in one, one shot. So I had to get um, the rails and the clamps for the rails and the, uh, what do you call them, the, the runners, the wheels for the doors uh, piecemeal. So the, the uh, doors were installed about six weeks ago, seven weeks ago. And I got those installed just in time for our 41 inch snowstorm. Otherwise the snow would have blown into the barn. Um, so we'll walk around, I'll show you the, the, um, the doors and the, the final product on the barn. I do have one big issue though with the barn and that is that I don't <laughs> have enough room for everything. So I've been collecting um, Toys, no, tools. I've been collecting tools um, and I'm running out of room in the barn for all of my tools. Um, I've got a lot of the uh, implements, attachments for my tractor off in the corner over here. I've got a brush hog, uh, my backhoe, my mowing deck, uh, the tiller, and then I've got a chipper over on this side, um, generator over here. Um, and I still have a 20-foot container off on the side of the yard here that I've got to empty and put all that stuff in here somewhere. <laughs> I don't know where. Uh, so I've got to figure all that out. Um, so let me take you around and show you the barn. All right, so let's start with the front door. That door came off the barn that was torn down. That was one of the part of the package that I bought. That door was all one piece. Originally, we cut it in half to move it here. Um, I was going to put it back together, <clears throat> but then decided, you know, it'll work better in two pieces. That way, if I want to just open up a small piece of the door, I can do that. I don't need to open up the whole door. Um, I can just move half of it. It's a heavy door. So that's the door. And the rails up there, that was the hardware that I had to buy, and I was getting it piecemeal. There's four rails, two on this door, two on the other door. I got those all together, but then it was the clamps. See all those clamps? That was the toughest thing to get. Those are what I had to get piecemeal, a few at a time. And then the, uh, what do you call them? The, the wheels there on the doors. I got four of those in one shot. And then I needed four more for the other door. I got those at a different time. Um, so that's what held up installing the doors by several weeks. So that's the front door. And now we'll go to the back door. So there's the door that I built. So I'll show you the other door. There's actually two doors here. There's one old door there. That's one door and you can see uh, right up in there. There's a second door behind it. And those are the doors that I was going to install, but they just need way too much work. I would have liked to install these you can see where the original bracket was there. I wish I had those brackets. Um, but I thought that looked pretty cool. You can see the, the mark from the original bracket. But these doors have, you can't really see them, but there are a lot of nails in these doors, old nails. And I would have had to pull some of those nails out, um, cut the doors down in length, and rebuild, just basically rebuild the entire door. And uh, I just, 
<clears throat> they don't want to do that. So I built this door here. Now normally, that door probably would have cost around $200 in material. But with the cost of lumber this year, and that was $600 <laughs> in material. Um, but again, that both of these doors run on the rails. They slide on the inside of the barn so that I can open them in the winter time. And they don't um, get hung up by snow and ice. So, and what I did is I put these little brackets up in the corners there, the framework to help uh, strengthen that framework. There's, there's a lot of weight on these doors. They're sliding back and forth and I don't want everything there coming loose. So what I did on this door is these doors, both doors have to slide over the footers there. So if I had these doors going down to the floor, then I'd have to pull them out. Actually, I did it on the front door, I'll show you. <clears throat> but um, I'd have to pull the door out away from that footer to get it to slide down through there. So what I did on this door, and this isn't final, I just kind of put this on uh, to close up the door for the winter. But I've got that little piece of wood at the bottom there that flaps down to close it off. It was working fine, but then I put those um, weather stripping pieces on those little sweeps on there to close up the gap between the door and this lower piece. But that rubber is too stiff, so I can't flip that board all the way up. So I'm gonna have to take those, those off and then devise something else, maybe a small piece of cloth or something to hang down to cover up the gap between the boards. So this is just temporary, but um, I'll show you how it works. All right, so on the uh, front doors, I left the door at its original length, um, and then I notched it out around that footer there. So on this door, now let me show you this. Just 
club to install some handles on here. And if I need to get vehicles in and out, I can pull that other half off. I can unlatch that half of the door and slide that over. This one will slide all the way over to there. And then the second one will slide into where that door is. All right, so <clears throat> this area is going to be my workshop eventually. I'll probably partition this off from that post right there over to the front wall. That whole corner will be partitioned off as a workshop. So a lot of the stuff I still have to get out of here, all the scaffolding, I was using that to, to uh, build the framework and install those rails for the doors. <clears throat> so those have to go back into my shed probably do that in a couple of months um, over here I've got my toys stored and then this corner and in this corner I got a lot of my tractor implements so here's one of the newest uh, pieces of equipment I bought. I got a real good deal on this woods brush hog. A um, little bit of rust along in here, but I can sand that down and paint it. Otherwise, it's a 48 inch woods brush hog, and it's only been used about a dozen times. And I know the, the original owner. So I got a, a real good deal on that. Uh, the other thing I bought recently was this Wallenstein wood chipper. That, uh, again, I got a real good deal on that. Couldn't pass it up. That was just a couple of miles away, uh, but on the other side of the mountain. So it's about a 30 minute trip around the mountain to get to this other house to pick that up. That I'll be uh, chipping a lot of pine that pine will be going on my blueberry bushes and blackberry bushes and whatever else I can put it on. So I've got a lot of pine on my property. I'll be chipping that um, for my bushes. So <clears throat> this corner I've got to clean out. There's some Christmas stuff still that's got to be put away here. Um, and then I'll be updating the electrical in here. I can bring some more power in. So that panel there will probably be coming out at some point. Then I've got to set up this right here. That's for my generator. So I've got to set that back up. That comes over up here somewhere. I'll set that up in there for my generator. The concrete floor. It's already getting dirty. Got a lot of leaves. I gotta keep sweeping out of here. All right, so outside. This is the front side. That's the old doors there that I installed. Um, the biggest thing left to do on this barn is work on the roof. So the crew that worked on the barn for me, they'll be coming back probably spring, maybe either springtime or summertime. There's a second roof on this barn and that I think was done to have a straight roof when the whole barn was settling and leaning this whole barn leaned that way by about a foot and it was uneven it was settling and you know <clears throat> it was just really uneven so they built a second roof on there to make the roof straight well now that the barn's all straightened out the roof has dips to it. You can't really see it too much now with the snow on the roof, but you can see this corner sticking up. And you can see this line right there, that's the original roof. So I've got this <laughs> pagoda roof sticking up there. 
So I want them to come back uh, this spring or summer and tear that second roof off and we'll get back down to the original roof. That sec the original roof should be nice and straight now. Well, here's the side. So I still have to sometime uh, this, this summer is install all the battens on these boards to cover up all the gaps between the boards, all the spaces. So what I'll do is I'll take some of the boards that are left over, rip them down and use them for battens and close that all up. Here's the back side. These, these are all boards off the, uh, the other barn. And there's the new door I built. I still have a pile of dirt there left from the barn work. And all that dirt still to get rid of. I uh, was giving it away, I got rid of some of it, but I still have the vast majority there. <laughs> I uh, didn't have time to get all this lumber out of here. I wanted to clean up before winter time and just didn't get around to it. So I gotta get all this lumber out of here still. And then uh, clean up over here. We gotta get these containers out of here. I still have all this lumber left. These are the floorboards under that snow. Some more of the roofing and siding boards over there. I want to have all this cleaned up and piled up neatly and under cover for the winter and never made it. So that's the barn as it stands. I appreciate you watching. I appreciate all the comments and the viewings that I've received over the 12 part series. It's been uh, <laughs> a long process, but I'm glad it's over. And now I just have to figure out where I put everything. Um, so if you like these videos, please hit the uh, like and subscribe button. I appreciate everybody's comments. I appreciate everybody watching. And we'll see you in the next video. Thanks much.